Hey guys, welcome to the Millennial Profit Show. Did you guys know that the National Crossword Puzzle Day is celebrated every year on the 21st of December? Well, it celebrates the birthday of the crossword puzzle. And you know how many of these crosswords have featured in newspapers worldwide. The first crossword puzzle appeared on the Sunday edition of the newspaper, The New York World, on the 21st of December 1913. Whoa. about 110 years ago isn't it crazy that crossword puzzles also have been proven to have numerous benefits some of these are known to delay the effects of dementia and alzheimers my goodness they strengthen the brain's problem solving abilities they help build vocabulary they decrease stress and improve social bonds when in groups wow i didn't know that a simple crossword did all this <laughs> and it's said that The Saturday's crossword puzzle is the hardest to solve. I looked this up on Google and I was surprised to see that there's a whole article that talks about how to solve the Saturday one because they intentionally make it difficult uh, to keep you occupied for a couple of days and some people do go through the whole week uh, trying to solve the previous Saturday's one. Interesting, isn't it? Here's a fun clue or two about the same word. Here's a typical Monday clue. Clue one, Nabisco cookie. Clue two, cookie with cream filling. Or the easier one, clue three, twist, lick, dunk cookie. I'm sure we understood it's an Oreo we are talking about. But for the same word, on a Saturday, the clues might look somewhat like this. Clue one, snack since 1912. Clue two. It has 12 flowers on each side. Clue 3. Sandwich often given a twist. So there's this article called How to Solve the New York Times Crossword which I'm trying to break down. In this they talk about gimmies. Now gimmies are those easy ones that you know where you don't have to sweat it out to get the word. For example, some of these good crosswords that you have uh, have a lot of these gimmies and some crosswords you find it difficult to find even a single gimme so that's how the difficulty of crosswords vary the other category of crossword uh, clues which are called fill in the blanks as the name suggests we just have to fill in the blank example one we need a blank so the blank is poo obviously another clue is actor brad dash of 12 years a slave now what does this dash Brad Pitt. So that's how we also get to know that it's Pitt when we see that it's a four-letter word, and then we start solving. What's the key to solving crosswords? You ask. Well, it's mental flexibility, according to Will Shorts. He says if one answer doesn't seem to be working out, try something else, which is quite sensible. And I'll let you in on a secret. Will Wang, the second editor of the New York Times crossword. between 1969 and 1977 says it's your puzzle solve it any way you like now this was a response to somebody who asked him whether it was okay to cheat or in other words look up the word you are looking for and try getting that onto the crossword puzzle well it's okay so anybody who's been looking up you're learning something you get a piece of info it will stay with you longer just make sure you're hydrated enough you have good company uh so you could solve it with a friend and maybe you could brainstorm and bounce ideas off each other and always take a break if you're getting stuck because when you do you are subconsciously thinking about it but you know you've told yourself that hey i'm not solving that puzzle actively <laughs> so that's something you can do as well there's so many tidbits that i could find uh, i found one that talked about tenses and you know let's say if the clue was adored then the answer to it also would be in past tense and let's say the answer is love it is not exactly love that you put in nor is it loves or loving but you would rather go and say loved because loved is past tense and that's how adored and loved match so that's the thought process behind it so when it comes to parts of speech again there are different ways to deal with it Uh, there's this example that talks about the word book being the answer and the clues being one uh, which says make reservations as in the verb form of the word and the second talking about 
the item in a library right which is the noun form of the verb so we have to be very clear about what word we are choosing based on the parts of speech that is mentioned in the clue instead of uh, moving ahead with you know our assumption of what another alternative word could be like that the same applies to plurals right now for example if the clue says they might be sar the keyword they indicate that it's a plural the answer is a plural one so grapes may be one of the answers uh, another clue north and south dakota now when you hear this they are what they are states in the united states of america so they are states you wouldn't call them state right or you would say regions territories so those would be the answers so that's how you deal with plurals there are a few more popular kinds of clues one such clue is called the partner clue where the crossword expects you to come up with a word that is typically partnered with another word for example right if the clue says partner of live then you'd start thinking about live and what word comes right live and learn so learn is the answer similarly if somebody says uh, dash and sciences so partner of sciences as a clue dash and sciences then that dash would be filled with arts which is the answer so that's the partner clues where you have to understand uh, you know two words that come together another set of clues are called the cross reference ones where sometimes you see that the clue to an answer is actually the answer of another clue sounds crazy but hear me out right so sometimes you see clues like hey c14 across now which on the surface is not very helpful but it kind of is an indicator that the answers to the clue that you're looking at and the one at 14 across are somehow related all we have to do here is just follow the instructions the more dangerous clues and the more dangerous words actually there's something called rebuses which are elements that are made up of multiple letters which i don't know how but these are you know words or group of letters that need to be written inside a single square and such clues have been reserved for the thursday and sunday uh, crosswords and this is uh, as mentioned by joel fagliano the digital puzzles editor so in the digital format it's possible but maybe look out for those on your uh, newspaper columns well let's say that there's a clue that reads do it yourselfers activity and the space that you've been given for the answer is about eight positions right maybe you guessed it right saying what is that do it yourself activity it's a home repair which maybe the answer but when you think of it home repair itself spells out to be 6 plus 4 or 10 10 characters right 10 letters but you don't have 10 squares all you have is 8 squares and then you need to fit in 10 now this is where you need to realize that there might be a rebus which is the word air together put into one square on the crossword puzzle and that could make sense across as well as uh for the down clues and that's not it there are clues that use heteronyms now these are the most confounding type of clues which will take people by surprise now heteronyms are nothing but two or more words that are spelled identically but have different pronunciations and meanings as well now let's take the word m i n u t e it's spelled minute which means small or tiny or it's spelled minute which is a unit of time take a look at this clue it says one of them does question mark and the answer is four letters long what does your mind say is there a pronunciation difference to one of these words one of them does well i immediately thought maybe it's not does it's does d o e do plural does one of them does and do is a stag or a deer 
which is both four letters, but those are female. So my mind went with deer. So deer was also the answer to this to this clue. Well, that's it for now. And I hope you enjoy your crossword day with a crossword or two. And let me know if you've played crosswords with rebuses and also have come across some of the clues that I've mentioned. So until next time, see you.